Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today we're going to do a Hackintosh install with El Capitan on a 6700K PC. So I'm super excited about this because uh, currently I'm using the PC 6700K PC for VR and it's got Windows 10 installed, but I really want to use it uh, as a Hackintosh so that I can do Final Cut Pro editing and everything on it also. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I do is I go to the TonyMacX86.com website. I click on the installation guide. Pretty simple. And then I click on download OSX El Capitan. And this gives you the instructions here. So I'm going to open up the Mac App Store, log in, and download OSX El Capitan. There we go. Click the download button. Continue. We can view the status of the download in Launchpad. And we'll just wait until that's done. All right, OSX El Capitan has been downloaded. All right, so we want to get out of this installation thing. Okay, it says application install OSX El Capitan will appear in slash applications. Next, we're going to create a bootable USB drive with Unibeast. So we're going to insert the USB drive. In my case, as I mentioned in the um, component video, part one of this series, I have a Lexar Professional 16 gigabyte, 633 times SD, SDHC card. So I'm just gonna insert that into my Mac right now, and we're gonna start up Disk Utility. Okay, and it says highlight the USB drive in the left column, so I believe this is my SDHC card. Step four, click on the partition tab, which is not available. Well, let's try erasing it. Format, OSX journaled. And we want a GUID partition table. Okay, name, we'll call this one MultiBeast. No, USB. <laughs> Ironic, because it's not really a USB drive. Okay, and we're going to download Unibeast. And let's see, I guess we'll grab that one. I'm not logged in, so let me log in first, otherwise the download won't work. Okay, now I'm logged in, and we're going to hit download now. All right, all right, my file's been downloaded. I'm going to click the down arrow. I'm going to go to Show in Finder. All right, and I'm gonna drag this over to my Unibeast folder that I just created. That way I can find it. Then I'm gonna unzip it. All right, great. So it just says Unibeast. I'm gonna open that. And I'm going to close this page here and go back to the instructions and it says continue, 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 agree. So let's find Unibeast. There it is. So continue, 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 agree. All right, and select the destination as USB, selected, continue. Select OS installation screen, choose El Capitan, okay, continue. Select UEFI, UEFI, continue. I'm not going to inject anything, I don't need that. Verify installation options, continue, enter password, click install, continue. All right, install succeeded, great. That was relatively quick. Let's go ahead and quit. Drag MultiBeast to your completed USB drive. Let's go ahead and install MultiBeast, or download it rather. Get it from the same place as this UniBeast link. MultiBeast El Capitan. Download now. I'm gonna go to Show in Finder. I'm going to do the same thing with this that I did to Unibeast. I've just got this folder over here that I drag things into because my downloads folder is too cluttered. So I'm going to double click that. That'll give us this folder here. And we're just going to drag this down here to our USB drive. Let's go ahead and close this window and this window. And now we're ready to boot into this SD card. All right, so I'm gonna enter into the BIOS setup here. I'm pressing the delete key repeatedly. 
Okay. And the first thing that we're going to do is load optimize defaults. So we're going to hit the F7 key here. And then the two things that I think need to change, I've been through this a couple of times already uh, in testing. So the two things that need to change are XHCI handoff that needs to be enabled. And the serial ports need to be disabled. I don't know if the parallel port also needs to be disabled, but I've been disabling it. VTD is already disabled, and I think everything else is fine the way it is. Yeah, legacy USB has to be enabled. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so let's boot into the SDHC card. At least I'm getting the menu this time. Let's try the UEFI generic multi-card. There we go, that's better. Okay, let's try this again. Options, boot options, NV disable equals one. External, boot Mac OS X. Sweet, we're in. All right, so I click next here. At this point, we're going to go to Utilities, Disk Utility, and we're going to wipe out my El Capitan drive. So we're going to erase that. Uh, erase the actual partition instead of the drive itself. Not that it matters in this case, but if this wasn't an El Capitan installation, it might matter. So OSX Extended Journaled, GUID Partition Type, Erase. Done. Continue. El Capitan. Continue. Yeah, this gives me the other boot menu. It's so weird. This board is odd. This is a uh, Gigabyte Z170 XP hyphen SLI, and I think it's a bit buggy. Maybe because it's newish, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're gonna choose uh, UEFI generic multi-card again. Okay, and again, we have to go into our options and we have to set NV disable equals one. And this time we're going to go into our HFS partition. So we're booting from the USB SD card. That's our bootloader. But we're going into the actual hard drive. United States, US keyboard layout. This is my Wi-Fi network. Don't transfer any information. Don't enable location services. Uh, don't sign in. Agree. Okay. We'll go with the math icon. Okay, New York. We're not going to send diagnostics since this is a Hackintosh. All right, keyboard identification. Continue, shift Z, shift slash, done. Now, at this point, we have to run MultiBeast, so let's open up our USB drive here. Quick start, UEFI boot, audio. Now, I haven't tried these audio drivers yet, so I don't know if they work. Disk, not necessary. Um, I've seen some people use the fake SMC plugins. I don't know if they actually work or not. Network. I've heard people say that they use the Intel Mousy, but I tried this one. I tried the D3 and it gave me a kernel panic. Um, and I had to go into the, the kext and like remove the kext in single user mode. It was a real pain in the rear. I also tried the Intel E1000E and that didn't work either. So this is like a, uh, this motherboard has a Z2 or a uh, 219V uh, chipset in it. And I don't think any of these work for it, so I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. Um, there's, 
I, I think you can download one on the internet, but uh, I don't really need my wired network anyway, so it's not a big deal for me. I've got, I've got Wi-Fi, and that's all I really need. Now, the USB, this is important. I need USB. I've got to have an external hard drive to do Final Cut Pro, and uh, this increased max port limit is what gives you your USB functionality. If you don't put that on there, uh, I got my my two like my 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 Logitech mouse and keyboard receivers to work, but I couldn't get any external hard drives or SDHC cards or anything like that to work. So, uh, increased max port limit is definitely a necessity. Um, it looks pretty good for me. I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my USB drive. Call it call it the Dual 980 Ti Beast. Replace it. Install. Agree. All right, that's great. So now we should be able to boot, but we still don't have our NVIDIA web drivers. So let's uh, let's see if we can go grab those. Always grab them from Insanely Mac, not from the NVIDIA website. Insanely Mac is up to date. NVIDIA website is not. Let's see. We've got B01 and F01. I believe we are in 10. 11.4? Yes, 10.11.4. So 10.11.5 came out recently, but we don't have that one yet, so we'll do 10.11.4. Continue, continue, agree. Install. Now, one quirk of this, this motherboard is that it doesn't have a working NVRAM. So unfortunately, we can't use the software uh, dialog that allows us to turn on the NVIDIA web driver and turn off the NVIDIA web driver and just use the OSX default driver. That doesn't work with this board, uh, at least not right now. Maybe they'll fix it at some point in the future. So in order to fix that, we're going to have to set this manually. I will show you that in just a minute. Windows is always trying to sneak in a boot on me. I, uh, I just pulled out the SDHC USB card reader from the back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the number one boot priority. I don't want it to be Windows. I want it to be my UEFI Samsung SSD because that's the Mac. So we're going to save and exit. And there we go. Now we're actually booting off of the Mac hard drive. So, but we haven't set up our Clover config uh, for the NV to say or the NVDA DRV equals one yet. Because remember, this, this machine doesn't have a functional NVRAM. So we're gonna go into options. We're gonna set NVDA underscore DRV equals one here. Enter. I think that's all we need. Now we can press spacebar over HFS. We can see that NVDA DRV equals one is set. We'll just hit enter to boot. Oh, it's going to try to download something on me. Okay. Now, we are running the NVIDIA graphics driver, the NVIDIA web driver right now, but it doesn't say that we are. And the reason why it doesn't say that we are is because the NVRAM isn't functional. So that's okay. As long as it works, that's all that really matters. However, what we do need is we need to make sure that it uh, continues to boot using the NVIDIA web driver, and we don't have to manually type in NVDA underscore DRV equals one every time we boot. So the way we do that is we search for the Clover configurator. Um, this thing has the funkiest website. It's just super funky. I can never find the download link. There we go. So this is version 10.8. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is between vibrant and classic. I'll just do classic for now. It's fine. We're going to right click on it. Actually, we'll go in here. It's not going to let us right click. We're going to right click on it and go to open. And then open. Okay, and it always does this weird please read this garbage. Config.plist not found. Do you want to mount an EFI partition? Yes, I do. Mount EFI partition. We're going to do, I think it's a disk 1S1 on this one. And 
you should be able to see, yeah, okay, that's correct. So now we're going to import our config into the, into the tool. So we're gonna read it from the EFI partition. Config.plist, open. Ah, with these stupid messages. All right, so this is, this is the, all of the boot options that we currently have set right now. So we can click on boot here, and all we do is check NVDA DRV equals one, and now it will set that every time it boots. Super simple. Now to save that, we click this little export configuration button. We do save, and then we can just close this. Now, when we reboot, it should set NVDA underscore DRV equals one every time. So let's go ahead and test that. All right, so now I should be able to just sit and enjoy the ride, and it should boot into Mac OS X all by itself. I shouldn't have to touch anything. And we should have our web driver when we get there. All right, yeah, there we go. So if, if the NVIDIA web driver wasn't working, we would see flickering right now. All right, and then what we can also do is we can open up these configuration panel things. And if we look at the ECC tab, we can see we've got a two GTX 980 Ti's, which is pretty sweet. Now let's do one more test before we uh, call it a night. I'm just gonna plug in the SDHC card. Let's make sure that it, uh, it shows up. Hey, hey, we got USB. Nice. All right, so again, I'm 100% I'm confident that we do not have wired ethernet, but we do have wireless because we're running that N900 card. So that's perfectly fine. Should be all right. Um, I have not tested the audio driver on this because I use the audio through my HDMI cables uh, with my NVIDIA web driver. So if the audio is important to you, by all means, test that. Uh, I haven't seen any reports that it doesn't work, but I just haven't had time to test it. So I think the major hurdle for most people is just getting it booted up to this screen so that you can, you know, interact with the machine and use it. Like, you know, that kernel panics and, you know, getting shut down at in the boot process really bother people. So most people, I think, as long as they can get to this point, uh, they, can, they can start playing around. So this is Jesse with Create This. Hope you found this video interesting or useful. Uh, this is how to, how to boot a 6700K Hackintosh. Yeah. Um, if you like this video, give me a like button down below in the lower right down here. Hey, if you, if you hated it for some reason, Go ahead and hit the dislike button, no big deal. If you have any questions about what I did here or why I did it, please feel free to ask. I, I usually respond pretty quickly. If you have any information about the wired ethernet driver or the audio drivers for this particular motherboard, please do drop me a line down below in the comments section and let me know. Uh, you know, I, I own this machine, I use it all the time and uh, I'm, I'm eager to, to learn all of its in, ins and outs just like everybody else. So um, if you're curious what hardware I used exactly to make this machine, maybe you didn't watch the, uh, the first two videos that talked about the hardware, there's a link to those videos down below in the description. Again, down here, there's a, there's a little show more link. All you have to do is click on that and you'll, you'll see all the, all the links there. I also have all the hardware listed out down there. They're all Amazon affiliate links. I do get a small commission if you, if you buy any of those items, but uh, it doesn't cost you a dime extra. It just helps me support the channel so that I can continue doing videos like this. This stuff takes me a long time. I think I spent two days for this build, uh, hardware and software. Pretty much two days solid. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you guys enjoy this stuff and you buy some of the same hardware, then uh, I feel like it's all, it's all worth it, you know? Uh, so anyway, as always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.